we're going to talk about this bin over here, a full bin. I'm out of worm castings. I have a gigantic garden in the backyard. I've sold everything I have. I've used everything I have. And I'm, uh, although I'm raking the bottom of that bin, and we're gonna rake in just a second, the reality is I'm not getting what I personally need for my gardens because I'm gonna empty that bin by hand and sift that entire bin so that I have plenty of castings for the needs of my neighborhood, my family, and my own garden. But let's go over and just look at this for a sec, at, just to look at the raking. Uh, a number of people have asked me, hey Matt, how, you know, show us how you rake. Now, it's very important to understand about this worm bin here and about that one and about the, the urban worm bin. You, if, you, if you allow them to dry out, what happens is you'll lose chunks of your worm bin. Your, a corner will fall and drop down. A middle will drop down. You need to keep them evenly moist. Some people say, don't overwater your bin. And the reality is this, I don't, I don't believe that you can overwater your bin. A matter of fact, I water it sometimes every two or three weeks until water starts dripping out of the bottom. Now folks say this, they say, well, if you, if you keep the soil down below really, really wet, your worms are gonna be down there. Well, I do all my feeding from the top, so the majority of them are not. But when I rake, we're gonna see, we'll find worms coming out at the bottom. And what do we do? We just, if you wanna save them, sift them right out. That's what we have the Brockwood shifter for right here. Uh, uh, sift them out and, and uh, put your worms right back in. Now, so let, let's just get into raking. So I, the last time I showed you this, it had a prong out here and a prong out here and it had four of these guys. And I was really working too hard. I'm 70, going on 72. And I was working too hard, so I cut it back and found out that this really uh, does the trick real good for me. So what I do, I just take this fork back here and I start just dragging it across. And I did a little here this morning, or uh, this evening, getting ready. But see, I, we're not gonna get a whole bunch out, but when I'm done, we will probably get, oh, well over maybe 10 gallons worth of worm castings. And they're dropping. I took at least 10 gallons out already this week. Myself a little rake, and uh, the rake is to draw all the castings this way. So now I go in and I pull the castings forward. Get all the corners. That just is just part of the continuous flow bin. And if people tell you that that's not so, I'm not quite sure if I want to believe them. Because I've done it dry and I've done it wet. And the reality is this, is that dry and wet, I always get worms. And by the way, this will cost you about two fifty at the at the hardware store to make. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we'll get some buckets and see how much that we've actually pulled out of here. Okay. Didn't look like a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of worm casting. Well, remember, I use I use leaf, I use leaf compost and wood chips to start my bins out, and uh, the worms don't eat all the wood chips to say the least. But boy, do they, they get some of it, and they get all the leaf, all the leaf. that baby over there.
We want to get every last bit. Don't want to waste anything. And that's how we do it. So, as I was pulling with that, with my two-pronged uh, rake, it didn't look like it was going to produce a whole bunch, but in reality, we have about nine gallons worth of uh, worm castings here. Now, I'll use this straight in my garden, or I'll take a gallon and a half at a time and make five gallons worth of worm tea and uh, water all my flowering plants. And I'm, I'm watering my sweet potatoes because they're big feeders, and I'm giving them a, they got castings at first, and then they're gonna get tea almost every third day uh, this summer because we want some big, big sweet potatoes. We just raked the bin, and now I'm getting ready to empty this bin. We, this bin is well over six months old, and I can, I can continue to rake it and continue to add to the top. That's what a continuous flow bin is. But I have this one, and I have that one, and right now I have my garden crying for more worm castings. I have neighbors asking me, do you have any more worm castings? I'm one of nine kids and my family is asking for worm castings. So I sold everything. And so what we're gonna do when you get to that point, if it's mature, you can go ahead and dig the whole thing out. And then I'm gonna start this bin all over again. We you say, Matt, how do you empty it with all the worms in there. Well, we lure the worms to the top and I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna put the worms that we lure into a bin that is almost complete. And uh, as you can see, I'm using some of the weeds in, from my garden here, but there's a lot of worms. I mean, this, this guy is, look at the worms in here. I mean, that's, that's one of the wheatgrass pads. So we're gonna start adding worms here and when I start this bin after I empty it, then I'm gonna lure the worms back up and put the worms in this bin and get the bin going again. So this is exciting. We're gonna take it step by step so we don't scare the worms, but I want you to see how we lured them. I put wheatgrass up here, food on top of the wheatgrass. We put watermelon in. I wanna tell you something. I am not the only person that loves watermelon. Worms love watermelon. And so we're gonna show you, look at this, will you? Look at the, look at the worms, look at the worms. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at the worms in here. That is pure worm. So we're just gonna take that and put that over here. We're gonna do this and oh my goodness, look at them all. We're gonna take these worms here and we're gonna put them right over here. We had a whole bunch here, I think I scared them. So we'll leave that one because they're, they're not jumping at that. Oh, look at this. So we have a whole bunch of worms also here. Okay, uh, I don't know if you can see them all. But loads of worms there. And we're gonna put that over there also. Uh, look at the worms in this one. Ooh, we, they like watermelon, I'll tell you. And then this wheatgrass right here, we, we, it's loaded with worms. As soon as I took the cover off, they all went down. But we're gonna take this guy. Look at the worm castings there, will you? Look at that, that's just pure worm castings right here that was underneath that wheatgrass. And so, and here we're gonna do the same thing where this one is loaded with worms and we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it over here and I'll spread those out in a little while. But now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this for about two weeks every day. Luke, just look at this one close. Look just this piece here. I'm gonna fold this up. Look at the worms underneath there. Is that wild? That's just from, that's just from a little piece of watermelon. So I'm gonna scoop these guys up and bring them over and put them in the other bin. And I have a few more of those. Look at this one here. Just that tiny little piece of watermelon. <laughs> so we'll scoop these babies up. And so we're gonna scoop as, as many as we can up out of here. And this one's loaded also. We just put that over there. 
Um, and again, just fresh worm castings all through here. And these are weeds from my garden. Thank you, Connecticut worm lady. You taught me immensely. And look at the worms here. That was a piece of watermelon there. And so we're just gonna scoop these guys up and just bring them over to the other bin and get this bin ready. Um, and you get the idea. I'm not gonna go through every one of them, but look at the worms in this thing. Here's another piece of, look at this, piece of watermelon. Loads of worms. So we're just gonna scoop those up and move them over. And so we'll just cover this up again so the worms can get a good night's sleep. And, um, and then tomorrow, I will once again <clears throat> lure the worms back up to the top, and I'll do so. It takes, once I feed them, it takes about two days for them to uh, get interested, and I will start to draw the worms up to the top, remove them, bring them over there. When I'm satisfied that I'm putting watermelon in, and you can, by the way, you can use bananas. They love bananas. Uh, anything sweet, any sweet fruit, avocado, whatever. But we're luring them to the top. As soon as I'm satisfied that there's not as many coming up as before, that's when I'll turn around, empty this bin, sift it, get the worms out, put them over here, start this bin again, and then we'll start, we'll come back over here and we'll start luring the worms up again and I'll bring them to, to uh, start this bin over again. And out of it, we're gonna end up with one ton of worm castings after it's all sifted. We have about a ton and a half in here. Once it's sifted, we will have at least one ton. To empty it, I was actually get on a ladder, stand up on top of the bin, and dump it into a wheelbarrow. If it's too moist, I lay it out on the floor and let it dry for a day or two. We have a, a fan and the warm weather, it will dry right up. It won't dry so much that it will hurt the worms because the worms will stay low near the concrete and we'll dry it up and then we'll sift the whole thing, put the worms back in and take the castings out. I, I've got some pepper plant, plants that are just crying for worm castings. I think this might set, these, two, uh, these two five gallon cans may satisfy those plants. I planted them the other day and I did not have worm castings for them. And that is a terrible thing. Folks, so that's it, you know, drawing some from the bottom, drawing some from the top, uh, it's exciting. And uh, let's remember we're worm people, let's stick together, let's share information with one another. Uh, it's very, very exciting. More and more, the more I share with you, the more excited I get about what is happening. Signing off for tonight, God bless you all. See you real soon.